And so I use this term technocratic, and what I'm really describing is scientific and economic expertise and authority. And so again, it's this idea that climate change, it's a problem of too many greenhouse gas emissions. So you use science to estimate you know, and forecast and model how many um, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are tolerable, what kind of uh, climatic effects arise out of certain levels of greenhouse gas, 450 parts per million, for example, what would that mean for temperature change or global average temperature change over a certain time frame? So there's a sort of scientific rationale to it. And then you use that scientific rationale to establish a framework or a baseline for where, where emissions are now, where they're projected to be, and where they should be, what kind of target should be established. And so a lot of times around the Paris Agreement, for example, there was a lot of discussion about preventing two degrees Celsius change over the next um, hundred years, right, before 2100. And a good example of the, of the t kind of institution would be like the European Commission in, in the EU. This is the body of um, a, a series of scientists, economists, other analysts who work to establish policy frameworks for the European Union. So to sort of write and build the legislation. And it takes a very technical type of uh, authority or technical expertise to derive that process. You could also think about economics as the same way, right? So if we agree we have a target of two degrees or preventing two degrees Celsius change, we understand how many emissions reductions we have to achieve. Uh, we know who are the compliant parties, which are the member states, and then we divide that total emissions quantity amongst the compliant parties. How do we then get industries within those parties to reduce emissions? Well, the problem with greenhouse gas emissions is they're basically an externality. So it's a, a, a negative um, public effect. Greenhouse gases are emitted by um, you know, a variety of industrial activities. And so understanding who are the major industries responsible, you can give them an allocation of permits. So each industry is allowed a certain number of tons of greenhouse gas emissions per year. And then divide creates a value for reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a very economic logic for how you resolve climate change. And when I'm arguing in the book, I'm not sort of disputing the importance of the scientific and the economic rationale. I'm just saying that they're not in and of themselves sufficient to achieve policy transformation or policy change because they're confronting then a range of other factors, socio-political influences, institutions that operate in the ground, and a range and host of different values that are engaged in different societies. I think one of the things that the book tries to challenge is this idea of sort of the rationality of economics or the, even to some extent the rationality of science. It's not to say that there isn't a rational objective truth to economics or to science, but it's to sort of say the context matters in which science and economics are enacted. And so that's where, I mean, the cultural context of the development of these markets is really important because I'm arguing you get different impacts in different societies depending on how cultural in, culture influences the development of markets in these places. What does it mean to have a long history of um, capitalist market intervention in the United States versus a different socio-political setup in China where you have a strong centralized authority that, that, that has a, a five-year planning process dictating how a lot of industry is developed or what sectors are targeted. So there's those differences in how state institutions operate affect how markets operate within the societies. And I think that understanding those differences is really important to then trying to do things like the Paris Agreement, coming up with an international consensus or an international agreement amongst different cultures. And so, you know, that's where planning to some extent comes in as a discipline and can be very important because planning is also all about the context, understanding, you know, both the, the physical context in which planning is done, but the socio-political context as well. Who are the different actors? What are their aspirations? What are their values? And how does that affect the technical solution? So you might, I mean, sort of think about that as the, the nexus between design and planning. And I think it's also a way in which you could think about these relationships between science, economics, and planning operating for climate policy.